Hello everyone, welcome to Heart's Happiness Podcast. The place where I, Manpreet, share my journey of healing intergenerational family trauma to help you to understand your story. I share a bunch of tools and tips that will transform your mental health and allow you to find your own heart's happiness. So exciting, right? Each episode will cover one of three areas. One, raising awareness of what this trauma actually is and how it hides in our lives. Two, tools, tips, support, lots of different things that I've used to get better and heal from this trauma. And three, I'll be connecting you with so many specialists and therapists and coaches as guests on my show. So we are going to transform your mental health and empower you to take your healing by the hands and move forward. Welcome back for another episode. This whole month on the podcast, I wanted to share with you episodes that could support you during the festive period because I find that people get, me included, more triggered, more sick, <laughs> more um, frustrated, more breakups. Um, it's a really difficult time of year and this year is a little bit different because especially here in the UK, we had last Christmas without our family members which was really hard but in some ways, may you may have found was actually a little blessing because there were certain relatives that you weren't seeing. And this year, you may be feeling a little bit anxious because there is pressure to see them out of obligation and guilt and family duty. And that's something I want to cover today is just how we kind of deal with that. So I'm going to be speaking about something called a drama triangle and also managing our state. You know, actually noticing how people in our lives make us feel and who triggers us, etc. So that's what I wanted to cover. Um, And it's just me talking about it. And these are little techniques that I've been using myself. So I hope they help you. And just a couple of little quick announcements. I've been busy working on my website to launch as I have now officially left my corporate job. So I'm doing Heart's Happiness full time. So there's a lot of new things coming. So I have created a new freebie on my website, which is a free 40 minute masterclass. So you get to watch a video of me rambling on about how you can create a version of happiness for yourself. And it's a great thing to watch at the end of the year. And, you know, before you kick off 2022 to like make your dreams come true, you get to see what I coach like and my sort of style and it's completely free. So check it out. It's on the website and I'll leave a link in the episode notes. I'm also doing a couple of other little treats for Christmas. So my eight week signature course starts mid-February. Again, a lovely new page on my website, which I'll pop in the episode notes. Um, but there's a hundred pounds off at the moment in December. So if you're interested, just drop me an email. And I also have going to start in the new year doing a couple like interactive workshops that are like two hours covering various topics that I discuss here on the podcast and going a little bit deeper in the new year on the 20th of February I'm doing a two-hour workshop on how to get unstuck it's called time to get unstuck so I found on my journey I went through a period where I would say for a decade at least, I felt really stuck in my life. I felt like every Christmas, every New Year, every birthday, every summer felt the same. I didn't feel like my life was moving forward. I was really frustrated, depressed, anxious. Um, I see now I was frozen by my fear. And in this two hour workshop, it's interactive. So we will be doing exercises to help support you to get unstuck um, using various tools I've learned over the year, actually. So I've been training in NLP, which I love. And I'll be talking about a bit about that this um, in this episode too. So if you're interested, again, on my website, there is a link to the event and you can purchase your ticket. A lovely little Christmas present for yourself and a great way to start the new year. Okay, so let's talk about managing our state. So this is an NLP technique that I learned. So that we have these two states, right? So for most of my life, I lived in something called crash state, which you may notice. So have you ever noticed when somebody, maybe a colleague, um, a friend says something and you like almost like you, your body contracts, like you've been punched um, you have a maybe an instant reaction. You start to overthink and analyse. You know, you separate yourself from, you know, reality. You go very much inwards in terms of, 
oh my God, how could they say that to me? Or, oh my God, I hate myself. I'm such a failure. And you feel this massive hurt. That's what we call the crash state. So contraction, reaction, analysis, separation, and hurt. So you may notice this over the Christmas period, like just dropping in and noticing your body's kind of like, you're literally dropping your shoulders, your breath's got faster, your heart's racing, you've got a tightness in your chest, you've got a tightness in your belly. Your body is telling you as well that you have contracted into that crash state. The problem is when we're in that crash state, we cannot access our conscious brain. We can't make decisions and we can't find ways forwards and we can't find solutions so it really cuts us off to our own energy so what I find or what I used to find in particular when I would reach the Christmas period I'd be so tired from running about you know wrapping up work buying Christmas presents sorting out the house doing a lot of things for other people packing out my diary and I didn't realize actually that I spent you know, probably the whole month in crash state because I was drinking too much, I was too busy and I wasn't taking care of myself and I was in this crash state. And, you know, I've lived most of my life in crash state and I'm really aware of it now. So what I would say to you over the Christmas period is really notice when you are dropping into this state because it's like a massive sign from your body that you need to get yourself back into balance. And the way that you get yourself back into balance is what we call the coach state in NLP coaching. So that is a very centered, open, being aware, connected and holded space. So it's it's so different. So if you imagine how you feel when you are sitting on a beach listening to the to to the waves looking at the sun you know looking at the big picture around you do you know that feeling that you feel that is very much coach state because you are centered you're sort of open to your experience you're not like afraid or um you know trying to keep yourself safe you're open you're like positive you you sort of access your brain in a whole new way and you feel like connected to mother nature and maybe if you're sitting next to somebody you know you're really open to that or or even we have certain people that make us feel connected and open and um you know that they hold space for us and they make us feel really good so i want you to really start to notice over the festive period what feels good what gives you that crash body response and what makes you feel um sorry that's bad <laughs> and what makes you feel good what makes you feel open and um loved and safe you know noticing those things in your life is such a massive part of a healing journey um and I think as I've become aware like they when I went on my course they just sort of gave me these names and it just made so much sense to me that when I walk through my field in the morning when I go for my morning walk I feel so in coach state when I am doing my breathing exercises and I'm doing my morning routine I can access my intuition, I have great ideas, I get solutions to my problems. But when I am overworking, busy all the time, have a slam pack diary, um, have not been taking care of myself between clients, um, seeing family members, maybe seeing people that trigger me a little bit too much and not taking care of myself, I am running on crash state. And when we run on crash state for for too long, we burn out. Um, So just becoming aware of that, that those two states is so empowering and sort of making more choice to be in that very special coach state. So over the Christmas period, you know, we are going to crash. That's part of life. You know, people trigger us because we have wounds that need healing. And when somebody triggers us, that's actually a great gift because it teaches us something about our own inner wounds but not that it feels like it at the same at that time but if we manage our state on a regular basis so when we do a daily practice to take care of our state when we do things that make us feel good in the day because there's so much we have power and control of you know we don't you know we can choose to be away from people that trigger us and take care of ourselves so when we're spending more time doing that we feel better and we we have more energy for the times that we do crash because that is an, an inevitable thing but there is a lot we can do to take care of ourselves. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. 
And then as we enter the festive period, maybe you are finding yourself being around certain people and you begin to notice, and this is what I really want you to do, is begin to notice what is happening to get you into a crash state. So we could be around toxic behaviour in particular, and I have other episodes on this, but just to um, remind you, it could be things like blaming, shaming you, giving you silent treatment, shouting at you, projecting on you, um, you know, maybe like insulting you, saying a really not very nice thing, you know, oh, you've put a little bit of weight this this Christmas. You know, it could be, um, you know, having loads of drinking around you and it makes you feel really uncomfortable. It could be, you know, really, like obviously violence and threats is, is very toxic. Put downs, you know, making you feel unsafe, bullying you, being judgmental, being controlling, gaslighting you. All those things can happen to a person because of somebody else and whatever's going on for them and then it can make us contract and go into this crash state where we can feel quite like a victim and powerless but that is not the case what is actually happening when you um sort of enter that crash state you're, like I said before your brain is got, got wiped almost because you can't access your brain so when you're in this situation where you feel that you're you've got triggered that your crash state has come, you know, from that centered place. I want you to straight away start breathing. A bit like what we've been speaking about in the last couple of episodes. So we've spoken about the nervous system response and we've also spoken about the power of breath. So breathing, breathing in and out of your nose, doing five slow breaths, wherever you are, when you feel that you've gone into crash state, that is a a real power move to get your brain back in gear. And then looking at the situation. So a toxic behavior has happened. Let's make sure that you are not partaking in the toxic behaviour by moving into the drama triangle. Now, the drama triangle has three aspects. Um, I have lived in the drama triangle most of my life. So it's um, something that I'm very familiar with. Um, So we've got three parts of the triangle, drama triangle. So you've got the victim. So that is when you've got your trigger you've um, been hit by a comment or something that's hurt your feelings, you go into that crash state and immediately you feel like poor me, feeling very victimised, helpless, hopeless, powerless, ashamed and you just feel like this other person has power over you. So the person that said the comment or, you know, um, uh, sort of inflicted projected or gaslit or whatever they did is called the persecutor and that is the person that says everything is your fault so they control they're blaming they're critical and they're oppressive they're angry so I find that you know this is very much a pattern from childhood as well so maybe you had a parent that's a persecutor so I certainly did that was my dad um and I as a child would fall into that victim role you know, that hopeless, powerless, you know, sobbing in a corner kind of thing. Because as a child, what else could I do, right? But then what happened was in certain relationships, I would um, go into that. Like I would very much freeze um, and go into this victim response and completely lose state of all my faculties because I was in crash state. Um, Another thing we may do when we're in the drama triangle is we may try to rescue so that is very much again giving our power away so it's like let me help you the rescuer feels guilty if they don't rescue so what they want to do is ignore their own feelings of being hurt and any anxieties and try to fix the situation so that goes to let me think of a situation where um if my dad was having a go at me persecuting me um I could tell that he was in a really bad place, bad mood. So he'd be falling into victim as well, like poor me. So then I would try to rescue him, um, you know, give him solutions to his problem, take care of him. But I would ignore the fact that he spoke to me really badly. Um, and that, and I had the same dynamic with my mum where she was maybe being persecuted by my dad. So she fell into victim and then I became the rescue trying to save her and fix her problems for her. This triangle, it really does <laughs> no good because it keeps us really stuck in our crash state it doesn't make us go and take care of our own um 
state. It doesn't make mean that we take care of our needs and what we feel. We get lost in that toxic behaviour, that drama. And we actually, even as the rescuers and the victims, we don't help anyway, anyone. It's not like we are literally giving our power away to someone who's not who's not well themselves, who's not behaving in a healthy way. And what the greatest gift I learned by learning about the drama triangle is to just get out of it. So when a persecutor wants to blame and they want someone to fix their problems, the minute you stop reacting and you take care of your own state, you do do what you need to do to get yourself back into that coach state, that centred, that open, that attending with awareness, that connected, that holding space, that walking in the field, that breathing exercise, that having a bath feeling, that you know being by the water, those kind of feelings. When you focus on getting your body back to that and not the drama triangle, um, it's so much better. <laughs> it feels so much more comfortable. But you will experience, as you learn to move out of the drama triangle, feelings of guilt and shame of not doing those patterns anymore and also the people that you love will still be in that triangle so they will be a little bit upset that you're not partaking in it so if you were someone that would try to fix things and get involved and you stop doing it you know there will be a reaction from the people that you love that why are you not playing this game anymore because it's really frustrating for them and um but that's where again you need to focus again on that coach state you need to be like okay I'm feeling guilt I'm feeling shame I'm going to just do some breathing exercises to calm down that response I'm going to give myself a hug I'm going to take care of my inner child I'm going to do some self-care I'm going to go for a walk I'm going to go shopping I'm going to go get myself a facial you just you literally like divert the intention back to yourself okay and you stay out of the triangle I spent so many years in a triangle with so many different people and I felt so miserable and so disempowered by being in that and that's what it makes you feel like especially when you keep jumping in to victim and through into rescuer mode all of the time but you know it's not your job to rescue people it's it's their job you know the people that need rescuing are small children under seven and you know that and if we're their parents it's our job to take care of them but it's not our job as adults to make other adults feel better about themselves you know to save them in their relationships to um you know like try to make this toxic behavior more comfortable for us because that's what we're doing as well when we rescue the toxic behavior doesn't feel good to us and it makes us feel unsafe so we want to fix it but we're actually what we need to fix and what we need to take care of are the emotions within us the changes in our body we need to focus on that and it's through that and feeling safe and riding out that wave that that's where the power comes not reacting to the trigger and trying to fix it you know, um, I spent years doing that with my mum and my dad. And even through their relationship, I was the rescuer of their marriage. Like, I used to help them communicate. I used to help them talk to each other. I talked to them separately when they argued. And, you know, that did them no favours because they had a really toxic relationship, which they never got help for. And they never understood each other. And it just got worse and worse. And I didn't do them any favours. I appreciate I did not know. So I give myself uh, forgiveness for that. And that was just very much my survival programme from childhood. But still, I didn't help. And then as I got older, I did that for other couples. Um, I did that for family members. I allowed family members to treat me like a bit like a doormat and speak to me really badly because I was going into my victim or I was going into my rescuer. And, you know, what I decided a long time ago, and I and it takes time because the guilt and the shame of, for me being a people pleaser for so many years is hard, uh, but it's not my job to rescue. It's not my job to be someone that, where they work their trauma on. It's not my job to do that. It's not your job to do that either. So over the Christmas period, just really notice when your change, your state changes. Notice if you are on the drama triangle and back away from that behaviour and manage your state, okay? And if you notice other family members, this is a new trick I'm doing lately, is you can also like break it. So um, I was talking to a friend and she was moaning about something and it's something that she moans about a lot and I for years have sort of taken on that role of being the rescuer in in our friendship trying to help her with with her said problem um 
and I decided that I would just change the subject and we just move on and we have a lovely conversation about something else because I don't get into that drama triangle with her I don't try to rescue her I also don't you know I might listen to her being a victim for a few minutes but then I'll change the subject and be like oh the weather's lovely oh shall we go like shopping or and you know it works it's actually kind of helping our relationship a little bit so you know not everybody's going to react really badly to it and there's little tweaks you can do just by like oh what's the color of that wall oh it's the weather's awful today you can do little things like that which just change the the flow of that drama triangle you know if people are moaning about each other or if they're gossiping or whatever makes you feel uncomfortable but i feel like you know noticing this and not playing that game anymore and really checking in with yourself and how you feel and what you need and managing your state keep bringing yourself back to that coach state is really empowering and a great way for you to kick off your new year is to become more aware of that and if you need help I am trained in this now so I can help you with various NLP techniques which I do one-to-one so again details of that on my website as well so good luck with your Christmas and hanging out with your families and if you're listening to this later in the year it's still relevant right because we have to interact with people that trigger us it happens it's part of life it could be a boss it could be a family member it could be somebody in the supermarket it could be you know a landlord they're everywhere but they're teaching us stuff about ourselves and they are showing us what wounds we have within us what need our attention and getting us to focus on what it is that we need learning how to soothe ourselves do we need breath do we need outside time do we need rest do we need sleep do we need water do we need nutrition you know learning those things about ourselves so i hope this christmas that you really start to notice that change in state and really give yourself the ultimate act of love which is giving yourself what you need and listening to what's going on within you this christmas you can learn so much you know (laughs) about your family and the dynamics so have a little look who's the rescuer who's the victim what role are you playing what role are you going to stop playing so you can start taking back the power of your life because when you are involved in the drama triangle it takes your energy as well and when your energy is occupied doing rescuing and being a victim then you don't have energy to create the life you want to move your life in the way you want to so where I said I was stuck for like a decade that was because I was spending so much of my energy like just imagine you have a certain amount in your bank account and I was spending that all on other people and sort of trying to keep myself safe in a drama triangle um and feeling very stuck but when I stopped playing those games I had more energy for myself and that meant I could invest it in me and in moving my life forward and you know now I'm in a relationship with someone who um (laughs) if anyone brings the drama triangle into the relationship it will be me from my learnt behavior you know going into victim or trying to rescue him and he is not somebody to be rescued he's a healthy human being um so he does not need that and I just really notice how he manages state really well he um doesn't partake in this drama triangle even in his families I've learned so much from being with someone that's been brought up very differently to me and also he's a man and he's just got a completely different perspective and I think that's been really interesting for me to notice because I've learned so much from that so that's a good thing to do as well just looking at other people's behavior and how they stay out of toxic behavior what are the techniques and tools that they use is this something that you could adopt so anyway I wanted to wish you a very special Christmas even though we're a couple of weeks away yet and if you need support during the festive period (coughs) I won't be working for a few weeks but I have got some resources on the website like the free masterclass a reading list and also um the podcast so just have a listen listen to it from the beginning it will really help you anyway guys have a lovely day and i will speak to you soon and there we have it guys an episode completed i hope you enjoyed it and it raised a load of awareness in your mind there was alarm bells going you were all like ding that's totally me because that's what i was like when i started this journey and that is the start of the process finding out this information and realizing it has happened in your own life so i really hope it was helpful and before the next episode coming out next wednesday be sure to check us out on instagram so it's hearts underscore underscore happiness 
also we have a YouTube channel where I share the videos I create for Instagram on so you can check that out they come on about once a week and then we also have a Facebook group if you want to join to carry on the conversation I want to create a community where we're all talking about our very real experiences and traumas and then there is also my website called heartshappiness.co.uk which you can check out to join our mailing list so that as I create new services and support tools for you all you're the first to find out and I have a freebie on there so definitely check that out it's five books that transformed my healing so if you really want to kickstart and you know you're liking the content in here these books are like the basis of so much of my knowledge so definitely check that out and I will speak to you next week. I'm so excited to continue this journey with you to help you to find your own heart's happiness. Take care.